secret location in It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show. Not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Congratulations to David Hiller, the now former publisher of the L.A. Times. The L.A. Times told us that they've got more reach than L.A. radio stations. And we see how great the business is down at the L.A. Times. They're laying off 250 people. Now the publisher has resigned, presumably with a gun to his head. <laughs> Sounds like business is doing just great over there. <laughs> yes. Well, look at this story here. Look at this story here. <laughs> I love this. There it is. By the way, as you know, we don't spend a lot of time talking about politics on this show. And this hour is not going to be about politics. It will only sound like it's about politics because of the first line of the story. But it's not. Okay, here it is. Democrat Barack Obama has insisted that blacks must show, get this, Greater responsibility for their actions. I'm just reading the story. I didn't say this. I'm just reading the story. Says here, in remarks prepared for delivery at the annual NAACP convention, the man who could become the first black president said Washington must provide greater education and economic assistance. But that blacks must demand more of themselves. Obama said, if we're serious about reclaiming that dream, we have to do more in our own lives, our own families, and our own communities. That starts with providing the guidance our children need, turning off the TV and putting away the video games, attending those parent-teacher conferences, helping our children with their homework, and setting a good example. He added, I know some say I've been too tough on folks about this responsibility stuff. Like that Reverend Jesse Jackson, who has a bastard child of his own. When he was screwing around on his wife, he knocked up some other chick. And he hates when you mention that, too. But, says Obama, I'm not going to stop talking about it because I believe that in the end, it doesn't matter how much money we invest in our communities or how many 10-point plans we propose or how many government programs we launch. None of it will make any difference if we don't seize more responsibility in our own lives. Wow. Wow. Obama spokeswoman Linda Douglas, wasn't she a TV reporter in L.A.? Yeah. Said it's not just a speech aimed at black audiences, it's aimed at all parents. This is a larger theme of responsibility. Unbelievable. Why is it unbelievable? Well, because I know the controversy this is going to cause. Whether he's right or wrong. Whether he's right or wrong. It's going to cause controversy. 
So in this segment of the program, you've heard the quotes from Barack Obama calling for blacks to take more responsibility for themselves. I'm going to ask African Americans to be our callers this hour and to get their reaction to this. Is what Barack Obama is saying fair? Is he right? Or is he just trying to kowtow to white America? And in reality, he's wrong. I need to get the opinion of black callers. So this hour, I will only take calls for black callers at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You heard the comments from Barack Obama. Now tell me. Is what he said right? Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, I just wanted to call up and just congratulate you on being the number one pick. It's the Tom Likey Show. Barack Obama speaks in front of the NAACP, and he says that blacks must demand more of themselves, must take responsibility. What do you think about that? It's Cheryl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller, so I'm glad I got through, and I absolutely agree with uh, Senator Obama. Uh, there is no other way that we are going to come across uh, to the world without uh, respecting ourselves first, and then others will follow suit. I am personally tired of, uh, of hearing about the N-word and so forth when we are the main perpetrators of that word. There's no other racial group in the entire country that refers to themselves by a derogatory name. There's a real problem there. Senator Obama is on the right track. He's the perfect example of someone who had every disadvantage growing up, who made something of himself, who is now one of the highly respected people in the world, and it's because of his own doing. If everyone followed his example, we wouldn't really have a problem. Um, are Jesse Jackson and, secondarily, Al Sharpton now irrelevant? Are what they're saying irrelevant? Absolutely not. But, uh, uh, unfortunately, Jesse Jackson, with that one blemish that he has, I mean, he has other things, and this is not a Jesse bashing, uh, you know, call, but, uh, you know, uh, his love child, so to speak, has, uh, kind of tainted him. But he has done some wonderful things with the coalition and the organization of, uh, the union workers and so forth, drawing attention to civil rights issues. Uh, he's done some wonderful things and that shouldn't take away from it, but to learn by example, uh, to show by example is the, is the best way. So well, it I does think, when you use the word God uh, in your speeches and you also, uh, 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 your first name is Reverend. Uh, really are you in a position? I mean, he didn't just have an affair. He knocked up his assistant. Hey, we're all, you know, that's a very bad thing, and that's a horror story. Yes. So, but that really, does that put him in a position where he really can't be a moral authority? Uh, I would say yes, especially after that incident, no question about it. People would argue yeah. with me. Like I said, he has many wonderful attributes, but that is a blemish that's permanent and certainly will be referenced in whatever he goes forth with from that point on. As yeah. you have brought up and as many people will bring up. Right. And and again, uh, it has nothing to do with Jesse Jackson's race. It has to do with the fact that his first name is Reverend. I'm an atheist, and I don't like people telling me what's morally right and wrong who are no better than I am. You're absolutely right, Tom. There's no question about it. And, I mean, you know, wars have been fought since the beginning of time over church and state, so you have a real dichotomy as far as that's concerned as well. So, I mean, there are many issues here involving him. Uh, I happen to like Reverend Sharpton. He's brought some wonderful issues uh, to hand uh, to the public, not, to, pub, to, the, to the public, and uh, he uh, has... Do you, uh, what about Durham, North Carolina? Durham, North Carolina. Remember the alleged rape case in Durham, North Carolina, yes. involving the stripper and the uh, lacrosse team? 
Yeah, that I mean, I think that the the evidence there was 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 kind of messed up. The guys involved had a lot of money. Uh, I think that you can pay people off, get people to say things. Things happen in the heat of the moment. Um, you really wait, wait. You really think you really think that they raped that girl? No, I don't. No, actually, actually, I think some foul play happened, but I mean, you have to go along with the law. And I do think that uh, if the girls involved um, were not black, that things might have turned out differently. Uh, I think that D.A. did put himself on the line and he got creamed uh, for it. But uh, as a black person, I know that the laws are different uh, uh, pertaining to the two races. And I do think that... In, things- uh, you know what? I agree with you in many cases uh, that there are, uh, still is racist out there in that particular case don't you think that girl played the race card and don't you think that district attorney was up for re-election and saw an opportunity to use that case to get re-elected I do think that the DA had his own best interest at hand. I do think that he was concerned about there were not just one, uh, uh, there were two young ladies involved. I do think that the second one, uh, who refuted, um, you know, the first one's story and so forth. And again, I don't know all the details, but, uh, you know, I do think that something happened there and those guys got off because of their clout. I mean, these are very rich guys. And, so you think uh, her own friend lied and threw her under the bus? Uh, I think it's possible, absolutely, yes. For money, uh. yes, I, think, I do think so, yes. And sorry if anybody disagrees with me, but I do think that, uh, yes, I do think that. That's my own okay. personal opinion only, though. What about her past record of driving, uh, stealing a taxi cab, driving drunk, crashing into people, uh, past history of lying about stuff? I mean, none of that? I mean, Tom, there's some good, uh, there's some stuff, you know, uh, uh, that definitely puts her credibility into question, but that doesn't mean that she did not, uh, that she was not assaulted in some way. I mean, there were broken fingernails on the floor, skin underneath the, you know, those nails, evidence of... Yeah, but none of the, wait, 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 none of the skin belonged to any of these guys. There was the DNA, the DNA evidence did not show that. I think that some of that could have been manipulated as well, Tom, and you know that that can be Well, true. anything could have happened, but but come on, even the district attorney just went down with a whimper. He didn't fight. He didn't say, come on, I had the evidence. He just simply uh, let them take away his job, take away his bar license. Do you really think he would have done that if he was innocent, if he hadn't uh, manipulated that case to make those kids look uh, like, like they'd committed a crime? Well, you know, you, I mean, all of the, the points that you point, all the things that you say are valid, and there was no DNA evidence, and you are correct. But, I mean, you know, you got a whole room full of, you know, testosterone-laden, alcohol-imbibing guys with two black strippers, and somebody gets pushed into a bathroom. And, and one black stripper says it didn't happen to the other black stripper. Tom, you know what? You can, uh, you know, anybody can deny anything. Um, and it, we have to go by the evidence. That but there was no evidence. Well, there was the there was the verbal evidence, and I mean, I personally think that you know, I mean, you get pushed into a bathroom with a room full of drunk young lacrosse players. I mean, something happened. I mean, well, why do you assume that? Uh, just because of human nature, I, I you know, and and the way the college scene is. But there's a, but there's guys. absolutely no evidence. Same all right, again. let's. All right, there's absolutely no evidence. Now let's go to another Al Sharpton case, the Tawana Brawley case of twenty years ago. Uh, he doesn't like when you bring that name up. What about that? It was a total fake. Who are you talking about? Who did you say? Al, Al Sharpton. Tawana Brawley. The woman who supposedly was attacked and stuffed in a garbage bag with human excrement. I know about the case, and that is quite unfortunate. Okay, we're bringing up... Um, you well, know, the point I'm making to you is that Al Sharpton jumps on any bandwagon that he thinks is going to get publicity for Al Sharpton. Uh, he brings up a lot of wonderful issues, like, such as um, and all the stuff that happened over in Bensonhurst. Those three unfortunate young guys that were in um, uh, it wasn't Bensonhurst; it was Howard Beach. You remember that story as well? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's not to say there aren't legitimate stories, but I'm saying that in many cases, Al Sharpton backed the wrong horse. Well, you know, we all make mistakes. Tom, and uh, unfortunately, if somebody called you up distraught, saying that uh, you they were assaulted, stuffed in a, in a in a plastic bag with feces and so forth, crying hysterically. I'll tell you what, I would want to see the evidence before I I put my uh, support behind anybody who made a claim like that. Uh, you know that that 
It's the one that we're speaking of is 20 years old, and I do remember the details very vaguely. Um, but in the beginning, well, I it's all there. It's all there on Wikipedia. It's all there in Google and well, Yahoo. You tonight, there's your homework assignment. Look up Tawana Brawley and okay. see what happened. Okay. In all due respect to your readers, please don't reference Wikipedia as a credible source because we all know that anybody can. Don't use Wikipedia. Use Google. Use Yahoo. Use uh, the newspaper archives that exist. The fact is, and you know it, uh, that the Tawana Brawley case was found to be a fraud. Yes, I do know that. Okay, but that doesn't mean that Al has nothing to do with Wikipedia. Interest. That doesn't mean that Al wasn't acting in her best interest when he tried to help her. The other he wasn't acting in the public's best interest or in the black community's best interest because the fact is that it was a fraud. The case was a fraud. Tom, this is one case in point. What about Yusuf Hawkins? What about what about the um, Howard Beach? Those were not frauds. Those I, were as I've said to you, you know, you throw enough stuff against the wall, some of it's going to stick. But the fact is, he jumps into these things many times without even knowing the whole story or without even knowing all the evidence. I'm a dude, Diablo. Okay, let me let's say something about something that did happen. Okay, the police officer's assault of that unfortunate young man. Okay, you're citing. You need to look at everything that he's done as opposed to just citing the things that you know make him not credible. Okay, he took up a human rights issue. It had to be proven. Yes. However, uh, you know that the falsehood. He has done so many good things, Tom. So I don't think that you can sit and say that. Is not credible. He is. He had somebody give him false evidence. That's quite unfortunate. But he's brought a lot of, of uh, civil rights issues to the forefront, and you know, just plain uh, police, you know, brutality, even murder for that matter, to the forefront. And I don't think that we can um, discredit him for that. As you, I can't think that you can say that as well. Well, I, you know, I believe me, it has nothing to do with race. I will go after anybody. And most of their first names are Reverend, no matter what color they are. I will go after anybody. Uh, who has, uh, in the past, uh, you know, made a case out of something or preached morality and it turned out they were wrong. Yes, and I, I agree with you on that, but I, but, but the case at hand here is, you know, uh, Senator, um, Obama's statement that, uh, black people, and I, cause I do not like the term African American. Nobody goes by Italian American or Jewish American or Irish American. Well, that was given to us by Jesse Jackson, as you know. <laughs> yes. But anyway, I, I'm one of the ones that I am an American who is black, okay? So I am a black American, and I'm very proud of that. So uh, I want to just stick to the case in point that you spoke with previously. And yes, black Americans, as well as anybody for that matter, have to lead by example and must be responsible for uh, our own behavior in order to gain the respect of others. There's no question about that. So uh, hang, on say, hang on a second here, Cheryl. Hang, hang on one second. Brian, you want to say something to Cheryl. What did you want to say here? Well, Cheryl, I mean, I think you've got a good purpose, but I think your, your facts are just getting skewed by your own self-pride as for your race. I'm a black man, okay? I think that my race is a, just as good as any other race. But right's right and wrong is wrong, and that's exactly what Senator Obama is doing. Is he saying, "Stop saying everybody's pointing fingers at me," and I'm, uh, and they're saying that I've done something wrong, and letting them get away with it? If the, if they're right and you're doing something wrong, then take the judgment. If you're not and you didn't do anything wrong, then stand up for yourself and do something better for yourself. Don't just sit back with your hand out all day long. That's what he's saying. Slavery. I mean, hey, I'm a black man. Trust me. On the totem pole for EOP, you're one step in front of me. But I'm not going to go back and say, hey, EOP, give me a job. I'm a black guy. i got to be better and better. i got to do yeah, my I job understand. harder and faster. I can't sit back and say that this is wrong. The Duke thing, those young men were innocent, and they were vindicated. Uh, plain and simple. I think that the girl that did say that uh, they were innocent, guess what? She was telling the truth. The other one had an illegitimate kid. She's a stripper. She's, got, she's not a saint. And as far as Al Sharpton, I hate to say it, he's on his own agenda, Okay. Jesse Jackson, hold on a second. Jesse Jackson, he did the cardinal sin number 101. Don't find yourself with a red face on a Wall Street Journal. Sorry. Okay. His credibility is out the window. Good guy, great cause. He blew his, he shot his wad in the wrong spot. Let me ask you this. Would you say the same thing if he wasn't a reverend and he had a child out of wedlock? Would you be as hey, hard on him as hey, you being I think Bill. I, I think Bill Clinton was one of the best presidents ever, okay? I'm a Democrat. 
But you know what? When he got his little hand caught in a cookie jar, and the cookie jar was Monica Lewinsky, guess what? He's been playing the last eight years trying to make up for that bad mistake, and even so far to try to get his wife elected, okay? And he was a good president, did a lot of things great, human, human politics, uh, public relations with foreign affairs, Middle Eastern affairs, but guess what? The minute he got caught with a fat Monica Lewinsky, what happened? His credibility went downhill fast. It's ten times worse if you get a reverend in the front of your, front of your name. Sorry. All right, no Tell problem. I mean, we true. can look at Elliot Spitzer and see someone that just went down for the same, you know, thing, and he has neither in front of his name. So I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. However, uh, you know, let's talk about something we agree upon, and that is the one thing you sound like you're a very intelligent woman, okay, black woman, proud, proud black woman, right? The two things that we can, one thing we can agree upon is that you know what? Forget about what race you are. If you happen to be black. You got some, and you live in inner cities. Social economic norms dictate you probably have more things going against you than have going for you. So why don't you take more of an active role in getting your own self up by your own seat of your own pants and doing some good? And if he gets some white votes by that because they they read his statements incorrectly, then God bless the man. And if he doesn't, if he pisses some young black man off, then maybe he needs to get off the street corners and stop listening to to rap music with the N-word. I like rap music, but you know what? I'm not going to let my kids run around saying no nigger and stuff like that on the air, okay? Well, I'm glad. Okay, so you're 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 part of the solution, as you know what Senator um, you know Obama was 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 speaking about. But you have to look at the disadvantages in not just any socio economically depressed community. I mean, the, the education is not going to be the same, so the opportunities aren't going to be the same. And you know, if your mom is 14, she's not going to know. Uh, you know, and she didn't graduate from high school, she's not going to know about the SATs when it comes to your time. So, you know, we have to look at these, you know, unfortunate things that happen and try to have measures. I don't even buy that. I don't even buy that. You know, that's, uh, sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off, but no, go who, ahead. Cares if my, if, if, who cares if your mom was 12 years old when you were born? You're going to the same public school system as that little white kid or that little yellow kid. Okay? No, you did not go to the it's, same public. That's not choice. Not, it's that kid's choice not, from eight, from eight until not, three and from 8 until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they have a choice whether they go to school and listen to the teacher or they don't. There are far more disciplinary problems and less teacher to student ratio. I mean, more students to teacher ratios in inner city schools and less money spent per capita on those students, as you know, than in, in than in other school districts. Okay, and we can cite numbers, but um, you know, I just want to let you know. You can't change that the world. Well, you can't change the world. So at some point in time, yeah, you're right. One thing that's I remember it was a Democrat said this. It takes not just a one family but a village, right? Okay, so if. Going back to what Tom asked of that question, which is a very intriguing question, I guarantee you a lot of non-African Americans out there might read that incorrectly. But I guarantee a lot of that pretty straight on for it, okay? And you know what? If uh, your dad was a crack dealer, it doesn't mean you've got to be when you grow up. you got good TV shows. You got bad TV shows. My kids love watching the Cosbys. My kids love watching the Fresh Prince of Bella. They love watching that other funny that Mexican show. I, my kids probably listen to the radio right now because I text them, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, but you know what? There's a lot of positive influences out there. They don't have to sit there and listen to, you know, bad violence on TV or uh, and things like that. There's a lot of positive things out there. You got to make a decision in life. You're gonna be good. You're gonna be bad. You're gonna be righteous or you're not. It doesn't okay. matter if you're atheist or agnostic or not. It's in okay. your own body. People are gonna be bad from now until the end of time. All right. So, so going back to what like I said, you know what? All right. That's a to, good thing. They have to be presented to the to to the child, okay? So I, that's all I want to say. And Tom, I think you're awesome. You tell the truth, and that's what I really like about your show, okay? Thank so you. I hope I hope you get more people on there that know about the issues and can respond intelligently and act in the manner that Senator Obama has exemplified throughout his life, and that we all need to take up. Okay? Thanks. You're awesome. Carol, Brian, thank you for the calls. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Stacy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, thank Hi. you for having me on. Sure. Um, the issue that I have with what Jesse Jackson said was cutting Barack Obama's nuts off. He experienced that. That's what he was fighting for in his early days, were for black men not to have that stuff happen. And then he's going to come off and say the thing that he was fighting for. 
that's what angers me. I can care less about his affair, his, you know, all that, even though he's a reverend. But the major thing at hand is he's supposed to be ushering in this new person, this new black person that he helped build up. You know why Jesse Jackson wants to cut Barack Obama's nuts off? It's because Jesse Jackson wishes his nuts were about to be the next president of the United States. I, I totally agree. And it, it just, that, I mean, I'm sorry to repeat it again, but that's what makes me very angry to be during a time when he saw all that. And then to turn around in this day and time to say the same thing that he was fighting against. That just, it really makes me upset. I understand. Stacy. thank you very much for the call. We're talking only to African Americans this hour about Barack Obama's comments. And this is about black people. Barack Obama spoke in front of the NAACP. And he said that, uh, quote, if we're serious about reclaiming that dream... Uh, we have to do more in our own lives, our own families, our own community. That starts with providing, providing the guidance our children need, turning off the TV, putting away the video games, attending those parent-teacher conferences, helping our children with their homework and setting a good example. He said, I know some say I've been too tough on folks about this responsibility stuff, but I'm not going to stop talking about it because I believe that in the end it doesn't matter how much money we invest in our communities – or how many 10-point plans we propose, or how many government programs we launch, none of it will make any difference if we don't seize more responsibility in our own lives. So we're asking black callers to call in and tell us, is he right, or is he being unfair? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My boyfriend's dad is listening to your whatever, and he is a good cop. Like, he seriously is a good cop. And now my boyfriend is starting to listen to you. So oh, I think good. every guy that listens to you is a piece of crap. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Talking to me? Uh, if your name is Tom. I am Tom. I'm 21 from Fort Worth, and I got some problems with the last caller. And you are black? No, sir, and that's one of my problems. What's the problem? I don't understand how... I, I think this issue concerns all of us. I mean, I, I... Well, whether it concerns all of us or not, it's a pretty much a given that the vast majority of white callers will all say that he's exactly right. That who's white? No, right, not white. Uh, no, see, I, I see, think the, the problem is majorly is that we're actually ignoring the issues and we're looking at skin color. I mean, Obama is a black man. Reverend Jackson is a black man. What does that matter? So why are we That's not the point. The point is, if you asked uh, white people to call in or just invited white people to be part of the group, uh, I imagine about 99.9% .9 of them would all say the same thing. But why not screen up this caller and get at least someone? So unless you're going to tell me that you think Obama is wrong, you're just confirming what I already believe. I'm not saying Obama's wrong. I'm not saying Obama's right. I, I'm... Is he right is he or right? wrong? The question this hour is, is he right or wrong? Two black uh, African-Americans, black... No, no, the question is, is he right or wrong? Why won't you answer that question? It's a subjective question. And uh, well, that's, what we, that's the business I'm in. Exactly, and that's why I called him. But it, In it, your it, opinion, is he right or wrong? Yes okay. or no? Then I'll, I will answer that question if you answer me this one. No, no, no no, it, no, 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 no. I, I am the host of the show, and I make the rules. You answer the question uh, before you hit the two-minute mark of being on the air, or I will hang up. Answer it. Yes, Obama's right. There we go. So there's no point in having white callers because they're all going to say what you said. Uh, go to the uh, Bill O'Reilly blog and tell everybody how you think Obama's right. One eight hundred, and they'll all agree with you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Eddie on the Tom Likas show. Good afternoon, Tom. Thank you for putting me on the air, man. Look, look, Tom. Look, look, man. This, this Barack Obama character is really starting to get on my nerves. How could you come out say you running for the American people? Go in front of the the, the Jews. You don't say nothing bad about them. You go in front of the Hispanic crowd. You don't say nothing bad about them. But as soon as you get in front of a black crowd, all you do is speak down. I think Jesse Jackson was right. He should have stood up and said it. He should have stood up when he was announcing it. He should have said exactly what he said while he was sitting down. That's what a leader do. A leader call him like you see him, and he 
wouldn't even apologize for it because Barack Obama is sitting up here downgrading black people and then he said, oh, I'm running for the American people. I'm not running for nobody. We can't, as black people, we can't even call on Obama to do nothing for us because he's running for the American people, but he can sit there and put us down like that? That's wrong. That's wrong. Jesse Jackson has the right to do it. Anybody that has fought the black, the black cause has the right to do it, but Obama and anybody that he know that has fought a black cause, he throw them under the bus. And then you want to get up and talk bad about us? And, and ain't nobody saying that. Everybody act like this is okay. This is I... not okay. This lady getting on here talking about, oh, he's right. I, I don't care if he's right or not. If you want to throw anybody under the bus that has helped black people get to where we are now, and then you're going to sit there and downgrade black people, that's wrong. That's wrong. I don't care how you look at it. That's wrong. The lady said, right is right or wrong is wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to make everybody mad, but this Barack Obama character is going to start losing votes, and I only think he's carrying on the white people trying to show that he's not all for black people by talking down this. What good has he said about black people? Hang on a second, Eddie. Let me what get... What good has he said? He hasn't said nothing all right. good. All right. Eddie, hang on a second. Let me get Mary on the phone. Mary, what did you want to say to Eddie? Hi, Tom. Hi, Eddie. Um, first of all, I can appreciate your passion and your um, how you're upset. I understand that because it's like one of the things that I know that we have in our community, and I know Hispanics do too, that what happens in the house, it stays in the house. You don't go outside and start seeing it. But at the same time, although that's upsetting, what he said was true, and the truth hurts. And so as truth, black, that's just, if, 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 if we if we would have fought a black what black cause what a black a, a black Eddie, I'm not yelling at you. I'm not yelling at you. Calm down, brother. I'm not trying to hear what okay, black cause. Okay, let, yeah, let me let you talk. Let me let me put let me put my piece out there, okay? Because my thing. My thing is this, what he said is true. Okay, whether it's right or wrong, the point is it's true. And us as black people, me not having any children or anything, it's up to us to do for us. Because obviously nobody's going to do for us. Obviously other politicians are not going to do it for us. And if you know anything yeah, about politics, he's saying, he's saying, he's saying and who is? Well, who is? It's not up to him to save all black people. It's up to black people to save black people. It's up to you to take care of your son. It's up to you to take care of your son. If you're not going to do nothing to help us, what gives you the right to talk down? You have not done nothing. I live in L.A. What a, okay, well, what gives, what gives um, people the right to call each other the N-word? Is that, I mean, what is that doing to build this up? What is that doing to build this up? But this is the one time, okay, but people like you, people like you are just going to bring the calls down now because they love it. If you watch that news, they love it. They love it. So people like you, even if whatever, you still got to support him. You still got to support him, Eddie. You get mad all you want to because the truth hurts. You still got to support him. As, and that's the problem. And that's why you black men don't have this because you don't support each other and the women don't support you. I don't even say no other way. Refer to themselves as a de 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 derogatory name. He's running for the president, not the black people. He's running for the president. They call each other rednecks all the time. They call each other, they put it on their church and everything. So how, how are you going to sit up there and say that? That's just a name that people call each other. Probably not. All these years, maybe if somebody would have said it 30 years ago, it wouldn't happen. If you're going to sit up there and we're going to have to say it, you wouldn't have to say it. 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 I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. I, I, I get that. That's why that's why you're talking about that. It doesn't have nothing to do with that. It's not even that. Now you're attacking me personally, and this is exactly what he's talking about. This is exactly what he's talking about. You're turning passion into ignorance. When the Muslim guy did the Man Man March, I wasn't upset. When you got oh, good for you. Good for you. What do you want a cookie? You want, you want, you want something. No, 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 no. I wasn't upset. But this right here, that's not the point. Just cause you find it cute. She has to okay, can I talk now, Tom? Tom, can I talk now? Right, Annie, I think you've gotten your point across. Let's let Mary make her point. Okay. Wow. Like I said, I appreciate his passion, but maybe if someone would have come out 10 years ago, Jesse Jackson wouldn't have a bastard child. Maybe if somebody would have said what he says, what we already know as a community. No, I don't like the fact that he went out and said it because now people like Fox News and all, the, with all those bias stations, yeah, they love it. They're like, look, and then all they show is black people who disagree. They are not fair. The media is not fair, and I don't... 
I don't expect them to be. But at the same time, the truth hurts. And people like me, I have selectively chosen not to have children and because by design. I mean, why if, if we have, especially in my community, that we're like the bottom of the barrel still. We're still the bottom of the barrel, and we don't support each other. We don't do anything. So me knowing that, yeah, that I came from Watts. I grew up born and raised 92nd and Bandera. So me knowing that there's still sisters and brothers out there who don't know anything about a scholarship, who don't know anything other than teaching their kids to throw a ball or rap or go in there and be a video ho. You know what I mean? I don't know if we can still say that on the air. but Yeah, of course you yeah. can. So it's up to people and responsible women like me. Yeah, I'm sexy. Yeah, I use it to get attention from young girls. And I can tell you, 10 people can call in that I donate my time to go into schools. And whenever I see a child in need, I donate my time and my energy to tell that woman, hey, why don't you get off welfare? Why don't you close your damn legs and stop having all those damn babies and use the ones that you got? You get free education. You get free all this stuff. Give yourself a five-year time frame. You know, go learn about credit. Go learn about investing your money. Stop having all these babies and the ones that you do have, educate them and educate yourself. I think that, yeah, maybe he should have said it to the Jewish people. Maybe he should have said it to the Irish Americans. When he's, But it's all about votes. And if you understand politics, he is not running for black people. He's not running for the president of NAACP. He's running for the president of the United States of America. Get that straight. Stop being all offensive and support him as a man of color. Support him as a man of color. If if you're so passionate about black people, why don't you do your part? Take care of your kids. Do what you got to do. And stop talking about oh pulling the one man who got it to the top. They still want to support Jesse Jackson. And personally, him and Al Sharpton have never, ever represented me, ever. You know, I, Hillary Clinton, everybody wants to say, oh, she was going to be the second messiah. We, you know, Bush is messed up, but if truth be told, you know, he just, um, and stuff was already going, I'm so mad. He, stuff was already going bad at the end of that Clinton administration. And all Bush did was bring his dumb ass in there and make it even worse. So it's not like we just need something new. That's my personal opinion. If he wins, great. If he doesn't, whatever. I'm still an American. I still have responsibilities. And obviously, um, to be honest, my community is still going to be jacked up. We've been the same way for over 30 years. And had someone come out and said it 30 years ago, maybe somebody would have did something by now. So I completely agree. And you missed the ice cream truck, Mary. Oh, you hear the ice cream truck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, down, it's, it's down the street. I'm going to get an ice cream truck. But I love you, Tom. You know, I'm not... I, I, For the first time, I got out of bimbo mode, and I'm, like, so passionate about politics, and I'm going to library, and I have a fiancé now, and he's, like... He makes me watch CNN. He makes me get into it. But, you know, I, and I totally understand my, my people, especially black men, you know, bad rap and everybody's always saying this, always saying that. But if you should use that passion and change it around, do something good. Be that one person that they can't talk about. I, I stand for me. I be that one black woman. Yeah, I'm from Watts, but you'll never know it by looking at me. You'll never know it by talking to me. But if I have to let you know, I will let you know. You know, if you want me to go there, I will go there. But, you know, it's not it's not like all the black men are like that, but a vast majority, and it's just like you. You don't consider all women bitches and broads, but you're broadcasting, and you're talking about all the broads that you've come in line with. So maybe That's all the black men that he's come in contact with, there's not too many Barack Obamas. But now that we have one, don't break him down. Lift him up. If you're that mad, go to one of his rallies, email him, tell him face-to-face, hey, I don't appreciate you going out there saying that. I don't appreciate this and that. But they let everybody else talk about him. Nobody else is all, you know, got their panties in a bunch about what they said about him. But when he said something about black people, oh, now it's wrong. They didn't get all mad when Don Amos was calling people nappy-headed hoes. I've never heard so much controversy over... Um, anything else, but the one time a black man comes out there and speaks what most of us consider to be the truth, oh, it's a big old thing. And like I said, I agree with what he said. I don't agree with him going out in public and saying it because we have enough people bringing black men down. And we as black women need to start supporting our men and stop getting an attitude when they go to other countries and get women and stop getting an attitude when they're walking through the mall with another woman or whatever. Do you. Mary, we're out of time, but you know we love you. Mary's been to my house, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.